The Chaldean Oracles Translated by Thomas Taylor Read by Dan Attrell The Oracles of Zoroaster There is also a portion for the image in the place, every way splendid. Nor should you leave the dregs of matter in the precipice. Nor should you expel the soul from the body, lest in departing it retain something. Direct not your attention to the immense measures of the earth, for the plant of truth is not in the earth, nor measure the dimensions of the sun by means of collected rules, for it revolves by the eternal will of the Father, and not for your sake. Dismiss the sounding course of the moon, for it perpetually runs through the exertions of necessity. The advancing procession of the stars was not generated for your sake. The widespread aerial wing of birds and the sections of victims and viscera are never true, but all these are mere puerile sports, the foundations of mercantile deception. Fly from these if you intend to open the sacred paradise of piety where virtue, wisdom, and equity are collected together. Explore the river of the soul, whence, or in what order, having become a servant to the body, you may again rise to that order from which you flowed, uniting operations to sacred reason. Verge not downward, a precipice lies under the earth, which draws through the descent of seven steps, and under which lies the throne of dire necessity. You should never change barbarous names. In a certain respect, the world possesses intellectual, inflexible sustainers. Energize about the Hecatic Sphere. If you often invoke me, all things will appear to you to be a lion, for neither will the convex bulk of heaven then be visible, the stars will not shine, the light of the moon will be concealed, the earth will not stand firm, but all things will be seen in thunder. On all sides, with an unfigured soul, extend the reins of fire. O oh man, thou subtle production, that art of a bold nature. In the left hand inward parts of Hecate is the fountain of virtue, which wholly abides within and does not emit its virginal nature. When you behold a sacred fire without form, shining with a leaping splendor through the profundities of the whole world, hear the voice of fire. You should not invoke the self-conspicuous image of nature. Nature persuades us that there are holy diamonds and that the blossoms of depraved matter are useful and good. The soul of mortals compels, in a certain respect, divinity into itself, possessing nothing mortal, and is wholly inebriated from deity, for it glories in the harmony under which the mortal body subsists. The immortal depth of the soul should be the leader, but vehemently extend all your eyes upwards. 
you should not defile the spirit, nor give depth to a superficies. Seek Paradise The wild beasts of the earth shall inhabit thy vessel. By extending a fiery intellect to the work of piety, you will also preserve the flowing body. From the bosom, therefore, of the earth, terrestrial dogs leap forth who never exhibit a true sign to mortal man. The Father perfected all things and delivered them to the second intellect, which the nations of men call the first. The Furies are the bonds of men. The paternal intellect disseminated symbols in souls. Those souls that leave the body with violence are most pure. The soul being a splendid fire through the power of the Father remains immortal, is the mistress of life and possesses many perfections of the bosoms of the world. The Father did not hurl forth fear, but infused persuasion. The Father has hastily withdrawn himself, but has not shut up his proper fire in his own intellectual power. There is a certain intelligible which it becomes you to understand with the flower of intellect. The expelling powers of the soul which cause her to respire are of an unrestrained nature. It becomes you to hasten to the light and to the rays of the Father, whence the soul was imparted to you, invested with an abundance of intellect. All things are the progeny of one fire. That which intellect says, it undoubtedly says by intellection. Ha! The earth from beneath bellows at these as far as to their children. You should not increase your fate. Nothing imperfect proceeds, according to a circular energy, from a paternal principle. But the paternal intellect will not receive the will of the soul till she has departed from oblivion, and has spoken the word, assuming the memory of her paternal sacred impression. When you behold the terrestrial daimon approaching, vociferate, and sacrifice the stone, Mnizdurin. Learn the intelligible, for it subsists beyond intellect. The intelligible lingis possess intellection themselves from the Father, so far as they energize intellectually by ineffable counsels. The above Zoroastrian oracles are from Michael Psellos. Part 2 the course of the moon, and the advancing procession of the stars. The most celebrated of the Babylonians, together with Austenes and Zoroaster, very properly call the starry spheres herds, whether because these alone among corporeal magnitudes are perfectly carried about a center, or in conformity to the oracles, because they are considered by them as, in a certain respect, the bonds and collectors of physical reasons, which they likewise call in their sacred discourses herds, and, by the insertion of a gamma, angels. 
Hence, in a similar manner, they denominate the stars and daimons which rule over each of these herds or starry spheres, angels and archangels, and these are seven in number. He who knows himself knows all things in himself, as Zoroaster first asserted, and afterwards Plato in the first Alcibiades. Moisture is a symbol of life, and hence both Plato and prior to Plato, the gods call the soul, at one time, a drop from the whole of vivification, and at another time, a certain fountain of it. There are certain aquatic daimons called by Orpheus Nereides, in the more elevated exhalations of water, such as reside in this cloudy air, whose bodies, according to Zoroaster, are sometimes seen by more acute eyes, especially in Persia and Africa. Since the soul perpetually runs in a certain space of time, it passes through all things, which circulation being accomplished, it is compelled to run back again through all things, and unfold the same web of generation in the world, according to Zoroaster, who is of the opinion that the same causes on a time returning, the same effects will, in a similar manner, return. According to Zoroaster, in us the ethereal vestment of the soul perpetually revolves. Zoroaster calls the congruities of material forms to the reasons of the soul of the world divine allurements. Chaldean oracles delivered by theurgists under the reign of Emperor Marcus Antoninus. Concerning the summit of the intelligible order. The monad is there first, where the paternal monad subsists. Concerning the production of the middle of the intelligible order. The monad is extended, which generates Two. Concerning eternity, according to which the middle of the intelligible order is characterized. Father begotten light, for this alone, by plucking abundantly from the strength of the Father, the flower of the intellect is enabled by intellection to impart a paternal intellect to all the fountains and principles. Together with intellectual energy and a perpetual permanency, according to an unsluggish revolution. For eternity, according to the oracle, is the cause of never-failing life, of unwearied power, and of unsluggish energy. Concerning the extremity of the intelligible order. Thence a fiery whirlwind sweeping along obscures the flower of fire, leaping at the same time into the cavities of the worlds. For all things thence begin to extend their admirable rays downwards. Nor has it proceeded, but it abides in the paternal profundity and in the adytum, according to the divinely nourished silence. It is the boundary of the paternal profundity and the fountain of intellectual natures. It is the operator and the giver of life-bearing fire. It fills the vivific bosom of Hecate and pours on the Synechies the fertile strength of a fire endued with mighty power.
Concerning love, who first leapt forth from intellect, clothing fire bound together with fire, that he might govern the fiery cratera, restraining the flower of his own fire. Concerning faith, truth, and love, All things are governed and subsist in these three. You may conceive that all things act as servants to these three principles. Concerning the intelligible order in general. The intelligible order is the principle of all section. This order is the principle of all section. The oracles show that the orders prior to heaven are ineffable and adds, they possess mystic silence. The oracle calls the intelligible causes swift and asserts that proceeding from the Father they run to him. All things subsist together in the intelligible world. Concerning hyparxis, power, and energy. What the Pythagoreans intended to signify by monad, duad, and triad or Plato by bound, infinite, and that which is mixed from both, or we, in the former part of this work, by one, the many, and the united, that the oracles of the gods signify by hyparxis, power, and intellect. Concerning Power and Intellect Power is with them father and intellect, but intellect is from him, the father. Concerning the intelligible in general. The intelligible is food to that which understands. You will not apprehend it by an intellectual energy, as when understanding some particular thing. It is not proper to understand that intelligible with vehemence, but with the extended flame of an extended intellect, a flame which measures all things except that intelligible. But it is requisite to understand this, for if you incline your mind, you will understand it, though not vehemently. It becomes you, therefore, bringing with you the pure convertible eye of your soul to extend the void intellect to the intelligible that you may learn its nature because it has a subsistence above intellect. Part 3 Concerning the energy of the intellect about the intelligible. eagerly urging itself toward the center of resounding light. Concerning the Triad In every world a triad shines forth, of which a monad is the principle. The triad measured and bounds all things. Concerning intelligible and at the same time intellectual natures. Those natures are both intellectual and intelligible, which, possessing themselves intellection, are the objects of intelligence to others. Concerning the Eingis, or the summit of the intelligible, and at the same time, intellectual order of gods. These being many, ascend leaping into the shining worlds, and they contain three summits. 
concerning the defensive triad which subsists with the Enges. They are the guardians of the works of the Father, and of one intelligible intellect. concerning the Empyrean Synarchies. All things yield ministrant to the intellectual presters of intellectual fire through the persuasive will of the Father. Concerning the Material Synarchies. But likewise, such as serve the Material Synarchies, concerning the Synarchies in general. He gave them to guard the summits with their pressers, mingling the proper force of his strength in the Synarchies, connectedly containing all things in one summit of his hyparxis, according to the oracle, he himself subsists wholly beyond. The oracles call the angular junctions of figures Synochidae, so far as they contain an image of Synochian unions, and of divine conjunctions, according to which they connect together things separated from each other. Concerning the Teletarchi These fabricate indivisible and sensible natures, together with such as are endued with corporeal forms and are distributed into matter. The teletarchi are comprehended together with the senoikis. Concerning Saturn, the summit of the intellectual order. The fire which is the first beyond did not shut up his power in matter, nor in works, but in intellect. For the artificer of the fiery world is an intellect of intellect, and of that intellect which conducts the Empyrean world. From him leap forth the implacable thunders, with the prester capacious bosoms of the all-splendid strength of the father-begotten Hecate, together with the environed flower of fire, and the strong spirit which is beyond the fiery poles. In the oracles it is said that Saturn, who is the first fountain of the Amelicti, comprehends and rides on all the rest. The intellect of the Father, riding on attenuated rulers, they become refulgent with the furrows of inflexible and implacable fire. Concerning Rhea, who, in the intellectual triad, is called by the Chaldeans Hecate. The vivific fountain of souls is comprehended under two intellects. Immense nature is suspended about the shoulders of the goddess. The center of Hecate is carried in the middle of the fathers. Her hairs appear similar to rays of light ending in a sharp point. Rhea is the fountain and river of the blessed intellectual gods. For first receiving the powers of all things in her ineffable bosoms, she pours running generation into everything. Concerning Jupiter, the artificer, the universe. The duad sits with this god and glitters with intellectual sections, together with the power of governing all things and placing in order everything which is not regularly disposed. And the fountain of fountains and the boundary of all fountains. The intellect of the Eternal Father, governing all things by intellect, said into three. For the intellect of the Father 
said all things should be cut into three. His will assented, and immediately all things were cut. Thence the generation of multifarious matter wholly leaps forth. The paternal, self-begotten intellect, understanding his works, disseminated in all things the bonds of love, heavy with fire, that all things might remain loving for an infinite time, that the connected series of things might intellectually remain in all the light of the Father, and that the elements of the world might continue running in love. The paternal intellect, who understands intelligibles and adorns things ineffable, has disseminated symbols through the world. Through intellect he contains intelligibles, but he introduces sense to the worlds. For he is the power of a strength every way lucid, and he glitters with intellectual sections. The artificer, who himself operating fabricated the world, he glitters with intellectual sections, but he has filled all things with love. These things the father understood and the mortal nature became animated for him, a matrix containing all things. The theology of the Chaldeans attributes seven processions to this god, hence he is called, in the oracles, seven-angled and seven-rayed. Concerning the unpolluted or guardian intellectual order. The union of the first father, Saturn, and the first of the unpolluted gods is transcendent. And hence this stable god is called by the gods silent and is said to consent with intellect and to be known by souls through intellect alone. And hence Plato appears to me again to assert the same things which were afterwards asserted by the gods, for what they have denominated, furnished with every kind of armor, this he celebrates by the being adorned with an all-perfect and complete armor. For being furnished with every kind of armor and being armed, he is similar to the goddess. Concerning ideas as proceeding from the intellect of Jupiter, the artificer of the universe. The intellect of the father made a crashing noise, understanding, with wearied counsel, omniform ideas. But with winged speed they leapt forth from one fountain, for both the counsel and the end were from the father. In consequence, too, of being allotted an intellectual fire, they are divided into other intellectual forms. For the king previously placed in the multiform world an intellectual, incorruptible impression, the vestige of which, hastening through the world, causes the world to appear invested with form and replete with all various ideas of which there is one fountain. From this fountain other immense distributed ideas rush with a crashing noise, bursting forth about the bodies of the world, and are borne along its terrible bosoms like swarms of bees. They turn themselves too on all sides, and nearly in all directions, they are intellectual conceptions from the paternal foundation, plucking abundantly the flower of the fire of sleepless time. But a self-perfect fountain pours forth primogenial ideas from the primary vigor of the Father. 
Ye who understand the supermundane paternal profundity, concerning that intelligible which is coordinate with intellect. For intellect is not without the intelligible, it does not subsist separate from it. Every intellect understands deity. All fountains and principles rapidly whirl round and perpetually abide in an unsluggish revolution. The ruler of the immaterial worlds is subject to them. Rulers who understand the intelligible works of the Father, these he spread like a veil over sensible works and bodies. They are standing transporters, whose employment consists of speaking to the Father and to matter in producing apparent imitations of unapparent natures, and in inscribing things unapparent in the apparent fabrication of the world. The employment of the assimilative order is to elevate things posterior to itself to the intellectual demiurgic monad, Jupiter, just as it is the employment of another order which has a transporting power to elevate natures subordinate to itself to the intelligible monad. For as the gods say, all things proceed from it as far as to the matter, and again all things return to it. Concerning Time Theurgists assert that time is a god, and celebrated him as both older and younger, as a circulating and eternal god, as understanding the whole number of all the natures which are moved in the world, and beside this, as an eternal through his power, and of a spiral form. Concerning the Frontal Soul Abundantly animating light, fire, ether, and the worlds. The speech of the soul of the universe respecting the fabrication of the world by Jupiter. I, soul, reside after the paternal cogitations hot and animating all things, for the father of gods and men placed our intellect in soul, but soul he deposited in sluggish body. Concerning Natural Productions and the Soul of the World Natural productions consubsist in the intellectual light of the Father, for it is the soul which has adorned the mighty heaven and which adorns it in conjunction with the Father. But her horns art established on high. Concerning Nature Unwearied nature rules over the worlds and works, and draws downward that heaven may run an eternal course, and that the other periods of the sun, moon, the seasons, night, and day may be accomplished and that the swift sun may as usual revolve round the centre. You should not look upon nature, for her name is fatal. Concerning the light above the Empyrean world. In this light, things without figure become figured. Concerning the universe. It is an imitation of intellect, but that which is fabricated possesses something of body. The paternal intellect disseminated symbols through the world. Concerning the composition of the world from the four elements by the Demiurge. He made the world from fire, water, earth, 
and all-nourishing air, the artificer who, self-operating, fabricated the world. And there was also another mass of fire. All these he produced, self-operating, that the mundane body might be conglobed, that the world might become manifest, and that it might not appear membranous. Concerning the seven firmaments, the heavens, the heavenly bodies, ether, air, earth, and water. The Father gave bulk to the seven firmaments of the world, and enclosed the heavens in a convex figure. He established the numerous multitude of inerratic stars, not by a laborious and evil tension, but with a stability void of a wandering motion. For this purpose, compelling fire to fire. He made the planets six in number, and for the seventh, he hurled into the midst the fire of the sun. He suspended the disordered motion of the planets in orderly disposed zones. The ethereal course and the immense impetus of the moon and the aerial streams. O ether, sun, spirit of the moon, and ye leaders of the air, of the solar circles, the lunar rattlings, and the aerial bosoms, the portions of ether, of the sun, of the rivers, of the moon, and of the air, the broad air, the lunar course, and the pole of the sun. The sun is a fire, which is the channel of fire, and it is the dispensator of fire. He constituted the heptad of wandering animals. Placing earth in the middle, but water in the bosoms of the earth, and air above these. The oracles assert that the impressions of characters and of other divine visions appear in ether. The most mystic of discourses informs us that the wholeness of the sun is in the supermundane order, for there a solar world and a total light subsist as the oracles of the Chaldeans affirm. The more true sun measures all things together with time, being truly a time of time, according to the oracle of the gods respecting it. The orb of the sun revolves in the starless, much above the inner erratic sphere. Hence, he is not the middle of the planets, but of the three worlds, according to the telestic hypotheses. Concerning the middle of the five mundane centers. And another fifth middle fiery center where a life-bearing fire descends as far as the material channels concerning the summit of the earth. The ethers of the elements, agreeably to the oracles, are there. Concerning Matter We learn that matter pervades through the whole world, as the gods also assert. Concerning evil. Evil, according to the oracle, is more debile than non-entity. Concerning the aquatic gods. The aquatic, when applied to divine natures, signifies a government inseparable from water and hence the oracle calls the aquatic gods water-walkers. Concerning Typhon, Echidna, and Python Typhon, Echidna, and Python, being the progeny of Tartarus and Earth, 
which is conjoined with heaven, form, as it were, a certain Chaldaic triad, which is the inspective guardian of the whole of a disordered fabrication. Concerning the Origin of Irrational Daimons Irrational daimons derive their subsistence from the aerial rulers, and hence, the oracle says, being the charioteer of the aerial, terrestrial, and aquatic dogs. Concerning Terrestrial Daimons It is not proper that you should behold them till your body is purified by initiation, for these daimons, alluring souls, always draw them away from mystic ceremonies. Concerning Divine Names There is a venerable name with a sleepless revolution, leaping into the world's through the rapid reproofs of the Father. There are names of divine origin in every nation, which possess ineffable power in mystic ceremonies. Concerning the Center The Center is that from which, and to which, the lines, as far as they may happen to extend, are equal. A fire-heated conception has the first order, for the mortal who approaches to fire will receive a light from divinity, and he who perseveres in prayer without intermission will be perfected by the rapid and blessed immortals. Concerning Divine Natures and the Manner in Which They Appear to Mankind all divine natures are incorporeal, but bodies were bound in them for your sake. Bodies, not being able to contain incorporeals, through the corporeal nature in which you are concentrated. A similar fire extending itself by leaps through the waves of the air, or an unfigured fire whence a voice runs before, or a light beheld near, every way splendid, resounding, and convolved, but also to behold a horse full of refulgent light, or a boy carried on the swift back of a horse, or a boy fiery or clothed with gold, or on the contrary, naked, or shooting an arrow and standing on the back of a horse. The gods exhort us to understand the forerunning form of light. Concerning the Mystic Ceremonies of Apollo The theurgist who presides over the mystic rites of Apollo begins his operations from purifications and sprinklings. The priest, in the first place, governing the works of fire, must sprinkle with the cold water of the loud-sounding sea. Concerning the human soul, its descent, ascent, body, etc. Filling the soul with profound love By understanding the works of the Father, they fly from the shameless wing of fate but they are placed in God, drawing vigorous torches descending from the Father, and from these the soul descending plucks Empyrean fruits, the soul nourishing flower. Though you should perceive this particular soul restored to its pristine perfection, yet the Father sends another, that the number may be complete. Those are in most eminent degrees the most blessed of all souls that are poured forth from heaven on the earth. But those are fortunate and possess ineffable stamina who are either produced from thy lucid self, O king, or from Jupiter, through the strong necessity of mythos. 
nor should you verge downward into the darkly splendid world, whose bottom is always unfaithful, and under which is spread Hades. A place, every way cloudy, squalid, rejoicing in images, stupid, steep, winding, a blind profundity, always rolling, always marrying an unapparent body, sluggish and without breath. And the light-hating world, and the winding streams under which many are drawn down, fiery hope should nourish you in the angelic region. To these he gave the ability of receiving the knowledge of light, which may be taught, but to others, even when asleep, he extended the fruit of his strength. Things divine cannot be obtained by those whose intellectual eye is directed to body, but those only can arrive at the possession of them who, stripped of their garments, hasten to the summit. Rivers being mingled, perfecting the works of incorruptible fire. Lest being baptized in the furies of earth and in the necessities of nature, as some one of the gods says, it should perish. More robust souls perceive truth through themselves and are of a more inventive nature. Such a soul being saved, according to the oracle, through its own strength. According to the oracle, we should fly from the multitude of men going along in a herd. As the oracle therefore says, divinity is never so much turned away from man, and never so much sends him novel paths, as when we make our ascent to the most divine of speculations or works, in a confused and disordered manner, and as it adds with unhallowed lips or unbathed feet, for of those who are thus negligent, the progressions are imperfect, the impulses are vain, and the paths are blind. The telestic life, through a divine fire, removes all the stains, together with every foreign and irrational nature, which the spirit of the soul attracted from generation, as we are taught by the oracle to believe. This axiom, then, must be first assumed. Every god is good, and the oracles witness the truth of the axiom. When accusing the impiety of men, they say, Not knowing that every god is good, ye are fruitlessly vigilant. The powers build up the body of the holy man. The oracles of the gods declare that, through purifying ceremonies, not the soul only, but bodies themselves become worthy of receiving much assistance and health. For, they say, the mortal vestment of bitter matter will, by this mean, be preserved. And this the gods, in an exhortatory manner, announce to the most holy of theurgists. The oracles delivered by the gods celebrate the essential fountain of every soul, the empyrean, the ethereal, and the material. This fountain they separate from the whole vivific goddess, Rhea, from whom also, suspending the whole of fate, they make two series, the one animastic, or belonging to the soul, and the other belonging to fate. They assert that soul is derived from the animastic series, but that sometimes it becomes subservient to fate. When passing into an irrational condition of being, it changes its lord, namely fate for providence. The oracle says that ascending souls sing a hymn in praise of Apollo, nor hurling, according to the oracle, a transcendent foot towards piety. This animastic spirit, 
which blessed men have called the pneumatic soul, becomes a god, an all-various daimon, an image, and the soul in this suffers her punishments. The oracles, too, accord with this account, for they assimilate the employment of the soul in Hades to the delusive visions of a dream. The oracles often give the victory to our own choice, and not the order alone of the mundane periods, as, for instance, when they say, On beholding yourself, fear. And again, believe yourself to be above body, and you are. And still further, when they assert that our voluntary sorrows germinate in us as the growth of the particular life which we lead. Oracles of Uncertain or Imperfect Meaning The Ineffable and Effable Impressions of the World He collected it, receiving the portion of ether, of the sun, of the moon, and of whatever is contained in the air. There appeared in it virtue and wisdom, and truth endued with abundance of intellect. From these the body of the triad flows before it had a being, not the body of the first triad, but of that by which things are measured. The first course is sacred, the aerial is in the middle, and there is another as a third, which nourishes earth in fire. An entire and impartable division. For he assimilates himself, he hastening to invest himself with the form of the images, nor to approach in a scattered manner to the Empyrean channels, but collectively. <laughs>